waiting for our Facebook Live folks to chime in. So um, we'll be getting started in just a second. So here we go. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Hour of Power. This is a prayer and empowerment call with you, the listeners in mind. I'm Dr. Kendra Davis Birch. The primary purpose of this conference call is threefold. Number one, this is a place where you will be empowered by the word of God. Secondly, this is a place where you can submit your prayer requests and intercessors like me and others who connect with us on the conference call and others who connect with us on Facebook Live will actually touch and agree in prayer with you concerning whatever it is that you have going on in your life. And then thirdly, this is a place where you can receive experience, strength, and hope from others through their praise reports and their testimonies. The Bible tells us, that men are to always pray and not to faint and that one can chase a thousand but two can put ten thousand to flight so on this morning you're at the right place at the right time to receive uh, prayer to receive your breakthrough to receive whatever it is that God has in store for you so I just believe that it is not the will of God for any man to perish it is not the will of God for any um for any of us to be sick, for any of us to be broke, busted, and disgusted, so we can change situations through prayer and through praise. So nevertheless, on this morning, again, I just say welcome to all of you all who are joining via Facebook Live and those who are on the conference call. So let me go ahead and I'm going to mute the lines for those of you all who are on the conference call to make sure that everyone can hear throughout the entire time. So I'll mute the lines, but I will come back to you all momentarily. Participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. All participants are muted. Amen. Let me get the entry extra. Entry and exit tones are off. All right, so let's go ahead and get started in a word of prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, O oh God, and we just praise you. We thank you, Lord, that this is the day that you've made, and we are already rejoicing and being glad in it, oh God. Father, we thank you this morning that you woke us up in our right mind. You woke us up with the use and the activities of our limbs and it's because of who you are and because of your presence in our life. On today, we come into your presence with thanksgiving. We come into your presence with gratitude on our heart. We just come this morning, oh God, just to say thank you for who you are and we thank you, God, that your mercy endures forever because we know, God, that if the enemy would have had his way, he could have sifted us as we, but nevertheless, Jesus has already prayed for us that our faith fell not. So, Father, we thank you how you kept us throughout this week, how you never left us, oh God. And, Father, we just simply believe that it does not yet appear what we shall be and that what's coming is certainly better than what has been. So now, God, we pray that you will have your way on this conference call this morning, that you will move by your power and by your spirit, that you will show up and show out, God, that somebody might be encouraged, that somebody might be empowered, that somebody might receive strength strength for the journey, oh God, and find insight and clarity about whatever it is that's been going on in their lives, oh God. So Father, we decree and declare that your word is a lamp unto our feet and your word is a light unto our pathway. So God, at the end of the day, when we don't know what else to do, we can find safety, we can find direction in your word. Your word is powerful, it's quick, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. So God, this morning, we're reminding you that we are relying on your word. We are reminding you that we are relying on your principles. We come this morning to remind you, oh God, that we are standing flat-footed and confident on your word that your word cannot and will not return void, but your word shall accomplish everything that you set it out to do. So God, somebody this morning need a word from you. Somebody this morning needs to hear your voice. They don't need to hear Kendra's voice, but they need to hear your voice, oh God, speaking into their situation, speaking into their hearts, speaking into their finances. So, Spirit of the Living God, have your way on today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm not sure why all of a sudden this um thing got blurry, but nevertheless, amen, amen, and amen. All right, well, it's time for our moment of empowerment in the word of God. So if you would, ma'am, and please, sir, if you would go with me to two different verses of scripture. First of all, 
Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 12 through 14. And then Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Mm -hmm. So if you will look with me to Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 12 through 14. And then Romans chapter 10, verse 17. And the word of the Lord declares in Ezekiel 37, verse 12 through 14. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus said the Lord God, behold, O oh my people, I will open up your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel and ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened up your graves O oh, my people and brought you up out of your grave and ye and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live I shall place you in your own land then you shall Shall live, then you shall live, that then you will know that I the Lord have spoken it and performed it, said the Lord. Uh-huh. Uh, well, let me read it, verse 12 again. He said, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, uh-huh, oh my people, I will open up your grave and cause you to come up out of your grave. Uh-huh. Romans chapter 10, verse. Verse 17 declares, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Mm -hmm. I said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. On this morning in your hearing, I would like to use for a topic. I'm coming up out of this. Uh -huh. Somebody typed it in the news feed for me this morning. Somebody just need to know that I'm coming up out of this. Lord have mercy. In this place on today, perhaps there are some of you who feel like you're stuck in a situation. You're stuck in doom and gloom. You're stuck in financial deficits. You're stuck in depression. Stuck in anxiety. You're stuck living between the prophecy and the promise. But I come to decree and declare in your hearing this morning that no matter what you're going through, no matter the obstacles that you face on this week, I come to let you know, baby, that just as sure as the grass may wither and the flowers may fade away, but the word of God will stand forever. I want you to get confident this morning that I'm coming up out of this. Lord have mercy. So in the, the, the boxing arena, in the wrestling arena, so while I have never been on the WWF, the World Wrestling Federation, I've never been a part of any of those platforms, but what I have come to understand is that there has been some close calls with some mighty warriors. There's been some close calls with some individuals who were prepared for the fight, but it looked like they was about to be counted out. It looked like as the referee came in with one, two... And it looked like they was not going to make a comeback. It looked like that they was not going to come out of this situation while the crowd was cheering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it looked like that their, their favorite person was going to win. And somebody on the other side was saying, no, no, no. Well, I come to let you know the devil been counting you out saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. This hit is going to take them out. This struggle is going to be the last of them. But on the inside of you, there was the spirit of the living God saying, that it's not over until God says it's over. There was something on the inside that started working on the outside that looked beyond your temporary situation and began to prophesy to your circumstance and said, I'm coming up out of this. I don't know who needs this this morning, but I double dog dare you laying right there in the bed to say to yourself, I'm coming up out of this. Somebody might be at the beauty shop this morning. I dare you to say to yourself, self, I'm 
coming up out of this. Uh, some of you may be standing, waiting for the door to be open, but you got to prophesy to your own doors uh, and said, I, 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 I'm coming up out of this. Uh, some of you been broke, busted, and disgusted long enough, but you got to look at your pocketbook uh, and decree and declare that I'm coming out of this. Uh, I'm coming out of despair. I'm coming out of poverty. I'm coming out of rejection. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out of this. Lord have mercy. Let me calm down. It's, it's a little bit too early for me to be preaching and carrying on. But but this morning, my assignment is to simply perform spiritual CPR to let somebody know it does not yet appear what you shall be. I come to let somebody know that you may be stuck in a temporary situation. It's just a holding pattern, baby, because you are coming up out of this. I didn't write it, but I read it. And y'all know me. Once I read it and I can find it in the book, baby, it's a done deal. That it don't matter what I'm going through. It don't matter what I may have to face. I done got me a word in Ezekiel. He said, you are going to come up out of this. So in other words, for the R&B listeners on today, there was an old, uh, old singer that said, ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Ain't no river wide enough to keep me from you. Well, that songwriter was singing about a love affair, but I want you to know that God has a love affair with you in mind. And today he's come to let somebody know that ain't no mountain high enough, ain't no valley low enough, ain't no river wide enough, ain't no problem too difficult that will keep me from blessing you, that will keep me from bringing you out. So on this morning, I just need to tell you again, I'm coming up out of this. Somebody on this call this morning, somebody on Facebook Live, you need to go ahead and send out an SOS. You need to send out a smoke screen and let the devil know, I'm on the come up. Uh -huh. I'm on the come up. I used to be held down, but I'm on the come up. I used to be pushed to the back of the line, but I'm on the come up because I'm about to come out of this. I'm about to come out of this. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. Lord, let me go back to my notes. Some of you on this call this morning, you have found yourself in a space mentally, in a space physically, in a space emotionally and financially that does not look like what you've been expecting from God. Are you hearing me? Some of you are stuck in a place of disappointment because you thought surely, surely, surely that God would have come through for you by now. You're Some of you are on this call and you're feeling rejected because you thought surely God should have showed up by now. And, uh, and for some reason, it looks like you're about to just wither away. It looks like you're just about to dry up and die. But but on today, I just need to let you know that even though you may feel like you in a barren place, your womb will still produce. Even though it seems like you are at a place of deficiency, the Lord will still deliver. Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. So when what you're experiencing doesn't line up with what you've been expecting or what you've been feeling and anticipating, you've got to rock steady and rock and stay firm on what the word says. He said, I'm going to open your grave and I'm going to bring you up out. Uh huh. He didn't just say that for any old reason. You may feel like you stuck in this situation. You stuck there, but he said, don't worry. I'm going to bring you up out of it. Come on here. See, when you your possibility is stuck and it seemed like what your reality is overwhelming your possibility. Come on here. I'm coming to talk to some people who are pregnant with possibilities. Uh-huh. Is that you? Pregnant with a possibility that you're going to come back. Pregnant with the possibility that you're going to be success. Pregnant.
pregnant with the possibility that you cannot fail, pregnant with the possibility that your business and your dream idea is going to be a blessing to many. But while you while you have that possibility in the prefrontal cortex of your mind, the enemy is whispering in your ear, what if? And the enemy is whispering, yeah, 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 you, you think that's going to work. So while the enemy is whispering sweet nothings in your ear that's loaded with doubt, fear, and unbelief, your, your faith possibility is slowly diminishing. But on today, I come to let you know what Romans said, Romans 10 and 17 that is. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. Mm -hmm. And hearing by the word of God. So in order for you to get that possibility on the inside of you to begin to grow uh, and to produce uh, and then to bring forth much fruit, uh, you got to add faith uh, to that possibility. What do you mean, Kendra? The Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So faith is your super supernatural currency uh, that causes God to move on your behalf. Come on here, somebody. I said faith uh, is a supernatural form of currency uh, that causes God to move on your behalf. Uh, the Bible declares that without faith, uh, it's impossible to please God. So what that lets me know uh, that you got to have faith in this season. I don't give a fat baby's behind what you don't have in your life. If you got faith, that's enough to start all over again. Some of us be looking at what we lost and not looking at what we got left. So you can lose your honey. You can lose your money. But if you got faith, baby, that faith is enough to reproduce much in your life. So come on, hit somebody. You got to have faith. While your back is against the wall, it looks like you're about to be on flat line. It looks like the enemy is counting you out. It looks like you've been buried alive. But I come to let you know if you got faith, you can come up out of that. If you got faith, he'll open a door that no man can close. If you just have faith, he'll make you a lender and not the borrower. If you just have faith, he'll cause you to be the head and not the tail. Does anybody got faith today? Hmm. You got to you got to have faith. See, when you're on the come up, this is not the time to surround yourself with still people. What do you mean, Kendra, still people? Look, when you are stuck between a rock and a hard place and you need God to show up in your life and you need him to move on your behalf, you need God to open up a door and you need a miracle like yesterday, this is not the time to be hanging out with still people. What are you talking about, Kendra, still people? Look at here. If you rolling with people who still broke, that's a still people. What do you mean? Still broke, still borrowing, still complaining, still hating, still running, still insecure, still childish, still lying, still cheating, still stuck on stupid, parked on dumb, and sliding down ceiling. That's still people. When you are needing a miracle from God, you got to get away from still people. Still stuck, still ain't going to change. Still lying, cheating, conniving folks. You got to get away from still people and get around some folks who got faith. Get around some folks who can make your baby leap. Get around some folks who believe God for anything. You got to get around some folks uh, who can stir up the gift on the inside of you. So if you gonna make a comeback, baby, if you gonna make it on the combo, you got to get away from still people. Come on here. Still stiff neck, still broke, uh, still busted and disgusted, still gossiping and complaining. Get away from still people, cause still people gonna be doing the same thing this time next year. Still broke, busted and disgusted. See, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. See, I learned something when I looked at still water versus water that's in motion huh? and water that's moving. See, water that's moving like a like a river or like a dam. Huh? That water moves with power. It moves with precision. But see, water that's still, like water that, that's not moving, that's standing water, that standing water is like still people. What are you talking about, Kendra? See, still water that doesn't have any movement, that doesn't have any uh, movement going on, it attract reptiles, it attract leeches, it attract mosquitoes, it attract all kinds of bacteria and fungi. So in your life, you don't need 
no bacteria. You don't need no fungus. You don't need no mosquitoes. You don't need no leeches. And you definitely don't need no parasites. So in this season, it's important that you connect with some people that's on the move. It's important that you connect with some people that's got too much faith to stand still. That's got too much faith just to lay here and wither up and die. So I that's your homework, children, today. I want you to make it up in your mind. I'm getting rid of all of the still people in my life because God's going to do something great. I'm on the come up and I got to get away from still people. They still broke, but I'm on the come up. They still depressed, but I'm on the come up because he's going to turn my morning into dance. He's going to give me the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So I got to move on. I'm packing up and I'm getting ready to go. So that was the old, old singers at the churches to say, I'm packing up and I'm getting ready to go. I'm packing, packing. Oh yes, I'm packing. I'm packing up, getting ready to go. So you ought to pack up your dreams. You ought to pack up your vision. You ought to pack it up and start moving to your destination. I don't know about you, Facebook, but I got a destination that's in my view. Though it may be rough getting there, but I'm going to press through because I got the faith to move mountains. I got the faith to move every obstacle, to move every hindrance in my life because I'm on the come up. How about you? Mm -hmm. So, real quick, I got to tell y'all why my conviction is so, so strong. Because see, when I mess around and, and saw in the Bible that there were some folks like me who were stuck in a situation, but they heard that the Lord was going to open their grave, that they heard that the Lord was in the resurrecting business. That's what led, led me to believe it don't matter what I'm going through. It don't matter what it looked like because I'm on the come up. So this scripture here in Ezekiel, it blessed me because one, the scripture Ezekiel was a prophet. He was a major prophet, meaning that he did some major work. So the Lord told Ezekiel, he said, look, I want you to go down and prophesy unto them. Mm -hmm. So in other words, the Lord, who's all seeing, all knowing, he knew that there was going to be a group of people who were stuck in a situation who was stuck feeling like they was buried alive. What did what do you mean buried alive, Kendra? See, you feel like you're buried alive when what you're experiencing don't line up with what you're expecting. So you've been believing God to do exceeding and abundantly above all you can ask or think, but you stuck buried alive in a place of insufficiency. So what do you do when abundance is kicking on the inside of you, but it still looks like you're living from paycheck to paycheck? What do you do when you've been confessing, decreeing, and declaring that by your stripes you're healed, but you still having a run to and fro to every doctor in town. He said, look, God, God said, Ezekiel, I need you to go down there and prophesy to those people to let them know, I know the situation look doom and gloom, but I want you to prophesy, not prophesy. You know, we get some parking lot prophets who be making up stuff that God ain't said. But he told Ezekiel, he said, look, I want you to prophesy and tell my people that that I'm going to open up your grave. Do y'all see that right there? The Lord spoke. So y'all know when God speak, it's a done deal. Because whenever he speak, he can back it up and make it happen just like that. He said, I want you to remind them that I'm going to open up their grave. So their grave could be those finances that look like they're about to die. The grave is symbolic for the situation in your family, the situation in your health. It looks doom and gloom, but the Lord is speaking through this prophet Ezekiel that says, I'm going to open up the grave, meaning I'm going to change this situation in your favor. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to make, I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to flip it just for you because you want to come up. He said, and I'm going to cause you. Y'all see it right here in the text. Ezekiel 37 verse 12. He said, I'm going to cause you to come up out. He didn't say come down out. He said, come up out. See, some of us 
haven't been on the come up because we've been pushed down, held down for so long. But today is the day that the Lord said, I want to upgrade you. I want you to come on the come up. I want you to come from, from the wilderness to this new place that's flowing with milk and honey. I want you to be on the come up. I want you to be on the come up so much so that when I cause you to get up out of that situation and go to another level and to another dimension because he said, I'm going to cause you to come up out of your grave. So in other words, I'm going to cause you to come up out of your situation. I'm going to cause you to come up out of your place of depression, your place of despair, your place of struggle. And then he said, I ain't just going to bring you up, but he said, I'm going to bring you up and out into the land of Israel. So what do you mean here, Kendra? I'm glad you asked. He said, not only am I going to bring you up out the situation, but I'm going to put you in the place of promise, the place of prosperity, the place of abundance. He said, I'm going to put you in the land of Israel. Do y'all see that? So skip down to verse 14. He said, then not only am I going to bring you up out, put you in the land of Israel, but he said, and I'm going to put my spirit in you. Huh? He said, I'm going to put my spirit in you and you shall live. Look at here. When you got the spirit of the living God moving, breathing, and operating on the inside of you, how in the world can you be defeated? How in the world can you be denied? Have you lost your rabbit mind? I need you to get your faith on cue, baby. He said, I'm going to bring you up out of that grave. I'm going to bring you out of that situation. I'm going to upgrade your life. I'm going to put you in the place, the land of Israel and then I'm going to put my spirit in you. Why? Because you're bad to the bone. I need you to know that there is power on the inside of you. There's too much anointing in you to stay down. There's too much power in you to be rejected. I need you to know what you got on the inside of you. What you working with. You got the power of God on the inside of you. He said, I'm going to put my spirit in you and you gonna live so in other words what I'm gonna put in you this time you will never be in the deficit again you will never be in this place of depression again he said you will never be able to experience this right here another day in your life huh I believe it's in um Nahum chapter help me Lord and then it was Nahum chapter 10 anyway I'll look it up for you but this scripture right here it says and this sickness Shall not come on you a second time. Huh? I'm in the book, baby. Y'all know I said all the time. I ain't write it, but I read it. But there's a scripture that says, and this situation, this sickness shall not come up on you a second time. So in other words, the Lord is saying, because I put my spirit in you, what you used to go through, what you used to catch hell, that hell that you used to catch, it ain't even going to come up on you a second time. Why? Because I didn't put my spirit in you. So in other words, I didn't boost your faith with a level of antibiotics that resist the devil, that like the antibiotics resist the flu and resist all these other sickness and disease. You better know the spirit of the living God that's on the inside of you is like an antibiotic that resists fear, that resists depression, that resists uh, doubt and insecurity. He said, because I'm going to bring you out and I'm going to put you in your own place. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all ain't with me this morning. He said, look, let me calm down. I'm going to put my spirit in you and you shall live. And I, I shall place you in your own land. Do y'all see that? I didn't make that up. He said, I'm going to place you in your own land. That means everything that the Lord has spoken to you. He said, I'm going to do it. On, I'm going to make good on it. Uh -huh. He said, I'm going to place you in your own land. Then you shall know. He said, I, I, some of y'all doubting Thomases and doubting Thomasinas on the line. He said, I got to show you who I am. And I'm about to show you what I'm working with. Are y'all hearing me? See, because the Lord know we had these schizophrenic bipolar moments that we allow. We entertain fear and we entertain the voices in our head that's telling us that we too far gone and God ain't going to bless and he ain't going to come through. He said, look, I got to show these folks right here. I'm right here in the scriptures. He said, then you shall know. Huh? Not your enemies. He said, I got to show you 
that I am who I said I am. He said, then you going to know that I, the Lord, has spoken it. So in other words, he's saying, yeah, Pook and them been, been selling you lies and telling you all those promises of what they was going to do. He said, but this time you going to know that I spoke it because when I speak it, I'm going to perform it. Ha, huh? there's about to be a performance for somebody on this call. There's about to be a performance for somebody on Facebook Live. Yes, you've been catching hell. Yes, you've been broke, busted, and disgusted. But because the Lord spoke it, not Kendra, the Lord spoke it that he was going to bring you out the grace. He was going to cause you to become on a come up. He's going to put you in your own place. Then he's going to put his spirit in you. He said, when I do all this, you going to know that I, the Lord, has spoken it. Could it be that you on the verge of an undeniable blessing, an undeniable breakthrough, that you got an irresistible harvest with your name on it? Come on here, somebody. If you don't want yours, send yours to P.O. Box 663, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27102, because I gladly take your harvest. So if you feel like your faith ain't conducive to receive the harvest that God got in store for you, tell the Lord to send it to post office box 663 because I'll take it because when God speaks a thing when he declares a thing, it's about to happen. So when he said he's going to open the grave, he's going to cause you to come on to come up, put you in your own place. Then he's going to put his spirit in you. He said, I'm about to do a performance. It's about to be your debut. It's about to be your time. Coming soon is Moosey Oaks to the platform. Yes, she used to be in darkness, but good golly, Miss Molly, she is now walking in this performance. Coming soon is Crystal Richards, Richmond. She's walking into a new place of abundance. Coming soon is Latonya Faulkner. Come on here. She's walking into health and healing and she has everything that God has for her. Coming soon is, is this woman of God. Is that woman of God. She's blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Why? Because she was on the come up. I'm coming up out of this. I'm coming up out of this. Are you coming up out of this? Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. The scripture says... I'm at verse 14. I got to show y'all so y'all can go back and read it yourself. The scripture says, when I put my spirit in you, when I begin to blow the breath of life, the breath of faith on the inside of you. He said, when I do it this time, he said, then you going to know who I am. You going to know what I'm working with. You know why? He said, because I have performed it. Lord have mercy. The Lord is about to perform miracles. He's about to perform. Not he's about to. The Lord is performing miracles in your midst. The Lord is performing signs, wonders, and miracles, breakthroughs, opportunities in your midst. Because he put his spirit in you. So in closing, I just want to tell y'all that if he did it before... He'll do it again. Are y'all hearing me? If he did it before, he'll do it again. I don't know about y'all, but I didn't seen too many miracles to let defeat have the last word. I didn't seen God open doors. I didn't seen him do miracles. I didn't seen him heal bodies. I didn't seen him make ways in the miracles. So there is about a way in the wilderness. There is about to be a performance. So if you seen God do it for others, you got to have faith to believe that he'll do it for you. Are y'all hearing me today? You got to believe that if God did it before, he'll do it again. So Kendra, what you talking about this morning? I'm glad you asked because I messed around and seen in the Bible that God specializes in bringing people on the come up. That he specialized in causing people to make a comeback from a dead situation. How do I know? Because when I read over in 1 Kings chapter 17 there was a widow at Zeph her son was at the point of death, but he was on the come up. And suddenly his situation went from rags to riches. He went from a cold blue to a resurrection. Lord have mercy. I read in 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 32 that the Shulamite woman had a son who was at the point of death, but he was about to make a comeback. And suddenly Elijah performed a miracle in our midst. Lord 
have mercy. If that's not enough, I read in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse number 20, that there was a dead man who still had power in his bones while the funeral director thought it was rigor mortis that had set in. But some way, somehow, there was another man. His funeral was going on and they messed around and throw the dead man's body into the tomb with the man. And suddenly things begin to rock it. Things begin to rail it. And who dead is that this dead man in 2 Kings chapter 13, he made a comeback. What are you saying this morning, Kendra? I don't give a doggone what it looked like. You may be on your way to the graveyard with your dream. You may be on the way to the funeral with your abundance. But today's the day that the Lord is saying, I'm going to throw some dead bones on your situation. I'm going to throw in a dead man named Elijah. I'm going to throw in some dead works and I'm going to cause it to cause a resurrection in your life. So although you was preparing for the final destination, he said, no, no, baby. I interrupt this funeral procession with a miracle in mind. So the same way the Lord interrupted the funeral in 2 Kings chapter 13 and the man received the resurrection Will you just open up your faith and receive the blessing that God has for you if God can cause a man to be resurrected through the bones of Elijah you think God can't resurrect your situation he can't resurrect your dream he won't resurrect your family you need to resurrect some stuff with your faith are y'all hearing me let me keep going y'all y'all still ain't convinced look at here see once you get the word of God See, this is the stuff that I'm proving to you. Not that I'm a defense attorney and I got to prove it to you, but because I'm, I'm, I'm invested in your spiritual growth. I want you to see that the same God who caused these folks' graves to be opened up in the Bible, that's the same God who wants to open up your grave, who wants to open up your situation. Why? Because Romans 10 and 17 says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I can resurrect your faith and get you to start hearing how God already did it before in the Bible, that maybe your faith will come up, that you'll believe that God can do it for you, that you can believe that this is not your best, that you can start believing that God has more in store for you, that you can start believing and start receiving and transition your mind and transition your thinking that there is more in you to be done by you and that you're not on your way down, but you on your way up. Hmm? Lord Jesus. So in my mind, I see this building being constructed. So if you know anything about construction, while I'm not an architect, neither am I an engineer, but what I do know is that an architect can identify problems and create a solution. Lord have mercy. An engineer simply follows instructions that have been put out on the blueprint. In this day and time, baby, you've got to learn how to be the spiritual architect of your life. That when the enemy comes in like a flood, that you, the architect, uh -huh, see, the one that's in you is the author and the finisher of your faith. You being the architect can identify the problem, but then through the word of God, you come up with a solution. So the solution is found in the word of God. The solution is found in his promises. Do you know you got 66 books of promises, of breakthroughs? He, you got 66 books full of stories, full of testimonies that how the Lord moved, how the Lord opened up doors, and if he did it for them, he'll do it for you. So you got to understand the same way a building is being built, the building is being created. Your life is being created. It's not not just on the surface, but sometimes you got to go deep. Sometimes the Lord has to go deep underground. You know, sometimes the Lord's got to go back and start dealing with stuff in your childhood in order for you to be this skyscraper. He's got to go back and start dealing with some insecurities to start dealing with some stuff in your life that's hindering you from this come up. I'm helping somebody. This one on my notes, but somebody need to hear this. Some of you haven't experienced the supernatural come up in your life. The breakthroughs, the blessings, and the opportunities you are being hindered by things that's underground. You are being hindered by stuff that's underneath the surface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you got the face. You look good. You sound good. But, but, but beneath that front, there's some issues in your tissues. There's some generational things that is hindering you like dead weeds in a flower 
swallow back some stuff that's choking the life out of you, that's hindering you from making a come up, that's hindering you from prospering beyond your imagination, that's hindering you from being your best self, that's hindering you from launching out into the deep, from starting the business, from writing the book, that's hindering you, stopping you, and blocking you. But today is the day that we got to uproot it. Today's the day we got to deal with the hindrances so this time you can be like a tree planted by the river of water without those weeds, without those generational curses, without those fears, without those insecurities so you can be the woman of God, the man of God that he has called you to be. Are y'all hearing me? Huh? Because see, when they're building this building, they can't just start on the surface, Sharice. If they just start right here at ground level and start building up, as soon as a storm comes, that building going to go shattering down. But when you take the time and dig deep and go underneath the ground, go with places that people ain't never gone before. Start digging deep and digging up some stuff in your life. Start going to those secret hidden places, those nooks and crannies. Go to those areas that people say what happens in this house stays in the house. Start going to those deep places and start digging up some stuff and then build a foundation there. Oh Lord, when you start building a foundation there and you start building line upon line, precept upon precept, you you start getting healed in your womb. Start getting healed in your spirit. Start getting healed from the childhood trauma. Start getting healed from rejection. Healed from abandonment. Oh, the Lord can build you there because it is there as he's building you in the dark room. He's building you underground. That he's building your foundation. He's building, but at the same time, while he's building and working with you, he's expanding your capacity to handle more. He's expanding your capacity to endure hardness like a good soldier. He's expanding in your capacity. He's expanding your strength so that this time when he begins to build and you skyrocket up and you begin to achieve your life dreams, when you begin to do more and to have more money than you ever had in your life, that that money shall remain, that that position shall remain because you took the time to do your first work. You took the time to dig deep. Come on here. Are y'all hearing me? So it's not until the architect identifies the ground that this building is to be built on. That he begins to dig deep. He's moving out the rocks. He's moving out the stubble. He's moving out the trash so he can build a foundation. He can build a foundation that this time when he bring you out, you won't be like a dog returning to vomit. Back to those same places. Back to those barren relationships. Back to that same place. He said, uh, uh, uh. This time, we're going to get it right. This time, you're going to build. I'm reminded those mothers used to sing, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Come on here. You got to take the time and be bold and courageous and be willing to build something great. How you build something great is, first of all, you start dealing with me. Michael Jackson said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his way. I ain't worried about who ain't trying trying to go but for me I got to look at me I got to start digging some stuff in me so this time when I make a comeback this time when I start skyrocketing and start doing great things that those blessings shall remain because I took the time to build something you've been built to last baby are y'all hearing me this morning see when the widow at Nain's son was at the point of death evidently they had the faith to believe that God can open up their grave and cause them to make a comeback. Because if you look at Luke chapter 7, verse 11 through 15, the widow and Nain's son experienced a resurrection. In Luke chapter 8, verse 41, Jairus' daughter, she was upgraded. She was at the point of death, but she made a comeback. If you look at John chapter 11, verse 1 through 44, Lazarus made a comeback. If you look at Acts chapter 9, verse 36 through 41, Tabitha, also known as Dorcas, she made a comeback. Why? Because evidently somebody in the house had the faith, the foundation was already built, that if they ever went through anything, that 
the Lord would interrupt this tragedy and begin to, to cause a resurrection to take place. Uh, then uh, then Acts chapter 20 verse 9, Eutychus, uh-huh, there was a man by the name of Eutychus. He fell dead. Come on here. I'm in the book. He fell dead in the church. Are y'all reading y'all's Bible? In Acts chapter 20 verse 9, there was a man by the name of Eutychus who fell dead. The scripture said Paul had been preaching a long time. So I don't know what in the world was going on, but the Bible said that the man fell dead and he fell from the third floor and he fell dead. But in the, in the midst of all of that, uh, he, this man experienced a resurrection that the Lord opened up his grave and caused him to make a comeback. So as I take this thing to the close, if you look at Matthew chapter 27, verse 50 through 53, there was another man. They 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 hung him high. They, uh, they stretched him wide. They beat him with a cat of nine tails. But he said, ain't no matter what you do to me, I'm about to come up out of this. He said, it don't matter who lied on me. I'm coming up out of this. It don't matter matter how much y'all take my clothes, I'm coming out of this. Y'all can gamble for everything. You can stand down there and crack jokes if you want to, but I'm coming out of this. You got to have so much confidence that even though they smiled in your face, but all the time they was trying to take your place, can you be bold enough to say, I'm coming up out of this? Can you have the faith to decree and declare in the face of your enemies? It don't matter what it look like. It does not yet appear what I shall be. I'm catching hell, but guess what? I'm coming up out out of this. See if you know the story that I'm talking about. His name was Jesus. Uh, they did all that they could do to him but his confession never changed. He continued to say I'm coming up out of this. You know the story. They beat him. He walked all the way up Galgotha Hill but his actions were still saying I'm coming up out of this. So in the end you'll see that although they shot their best shot. They did all that they could do in my own own imagination. I believe Jesus looked at the enemy and said, you did your best and your best wasn't good enough because I'm coming up out of this. So y'all know the story. They put him in a tomb, but his spirit was still preaching to the masses that I coming up out of this. Y'all know the story. Three days later, they came back, but he had already got up with all power in his hands. So what am I saying to you this morning, ma'am, is that you got the power, you got the ability to come up out of any situation that you may be in. You got the power, you got the anointing to come up out of this, come up out of that. Don't you let worry beat you down. Don't you let strength beat you down. You got to hold your head like an old Baptist preacher and tell your situation, I'm coming out of this. Won't it, won't it, won't it, won't it, won't it, won't it bring me out? Won't it open the door? Won't it make a way? Because I'm coming up out of this. You got to get your faith up, baby. Before you can get up, you got to get your faith up. Stop preaching to yourself with tears in your eyes. I dare you to say, I'm coming out of this. Hold your ear like them preachers. Like you hear the Lord saying to you, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming up out of this. Because the Lord has started a work on the inside of me. I'm coming out of this. The Lord has started something great. He started something wonderful on the inside of me. So I'm coming up out. I'm coming up out of it. You are coming up out of that situation by any means necessary. Are y'all hearing me? Huh? Let me read this scripture for you. See, after they did all that they could do, Trying to take Jesus out. You got to understand that your call is calling. That even in the mm -hmm. face of whatever has happened. There is more in you to be done by you. Your call will outlive the persecution. You can outlive the lie. Just keep on living and stay focused on your call. Are y'all hearing me? The scripture said in Matthew 27 verse 50. After Jesus cried with a loud voice. Check this out. Something began to happen. I'm in the book, y'all. He was in a grave. He was in a lose-lose a, a situation. But y'all know, God transformed. He flipped the script. 
Jesus went from a lose-lose situation that they was clowning him saying, well, if he's the savior, save himself. If he was all that in a bag of chips and dip, why he didn't get himself up off the cross? But Jesus said, hmm, some things in my life is just necessary. It was necessary for you to betray me. It was necessary for you to be and to cause my body to be left with scars. It was necessary because you know why? Because when God bring me up out of this and I start looking, I start you don't look at me and I don't look like what I've been through, then I can say it was necessary. Come on here. It was necessary that I went through those things. Because see, after all of that, he went to hell, he preached the gospel, and he took back the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He said this process was necessary. Because when I come up out of this, I'm coming up out with all power. Look at here. I done made it up in my mind. When I go through stuff, I tell the devil, look, I want you to know that I ain't coming out empty handed, that you going to have to give me some interest. Come on here. You going to have to pay me some restitution. After all the hell I done been through, you done lost your mind. If you think I'm just going to walk out and free at last. No, uh -uh. I'm coming back because I want restitution. Ain't nowhere in the world you can cause me to go through all of this and I'm just going to come out. Uh -uh. I'm fighting for my, I'm acting like them girls at Zalefa had. Give me my inheritance. I ain't leaving this struggle or empty handed. I'm not leaving this place of depression without something. Uh-uh. I'm gonna have double for my trouble. The same way Job went through all of that. Y'all read about it. The same way Job went all of that. In the end, he got double. So that lets me know you can put a demand after all the trouble I've been through. I decree and declare I'm coming out with double. I'm coming out with restitution. I'm coming out with more power. I'm coming out with more anointing. I'm coming out because the same way Jesus came out, he came Came back with all power in his hands. Are y'all hearing me? Look, when Jesus cried with a loud voice, suddenly the curtain tore from the top to the bottom. The scripture then goes on to say, suddenly the earth began to shake. Suddenly the rocks began to split and the tomb broke. Huh? Huh? I'm finna get up out of here. But I want you to know that you serve a tomb raiding God. Lord have mercy. Some of y'all seen that movie about tomb raiders. But I want you to know that you serve a God that's a tomb raider. He'll come right in to your dead end situation and cause the curtain to tear. Cause the, rock, the earth to begin to shake. He'll split the rock. He'll bust the tomb open to get to you. I told y'all earlier, ain't no mountain high enough. I told you, ain't no valley low enough. I I told you, ain't no river wide enough to keep my God from getting to you. He said, look at here. I'm about to bring you up out of this. I'm about to open up your grave. If I did it before, i do it again. I brought Jesus up out. After all the hell he went through, after all the hell you have been through, you better know I'm no respecter of person and you are on the come up. You are on the come up. That the Lord your is going to cause you to come up out of that place. The Lord your God, he's going to cause you to be a thousand times greater than you are. I'm in the book, write it down. Deuteronomy 1 and 11 declares, and the Lord your God will make you 1,000 times greater than you are. That sound like an upgrade to me. Let him upgrade you, baby. Let him upgrade you. I need you to endure hardness like a good soldier. I need you to go ahead and press on in. Press past the pain in your life. Press past the persecution. Press past what you're feeling right now because you are on the come up. You just got to continue to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know your labor is not in vain for you are on the come up. Huh? Yeah. You are on the come up. The Lord is opening your grave. He's making a way for you. All you got to do is trust the process. Trust the process. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But will you trust in the Lord? Will you trust in the Lord? So in closing, remember your homework. As you're believing God for this blessing, this breakthrough, 
Stay away from them steal people. You know, some of y'all just join. But stay away from people that still broke, still bothering, still hating, still complaining, still childish, still lying, still ain't got nothing going on in their life. When you're